I'm gonna call it right now. Astrobot is our lord and savior. In the past week and a half, Sony revealed what is now my most anticipated title of the year, Astrobot. The PlayStation 5 savior, as I like to call it, this game looks absolutely incredible. Described as four times bigger than Astro's Playroom, this looks like it's going to be the big breakout title for the Astrobot franchise and Team Asobi. Since the trailer dropped, we got even more details announced, including the price, deluxe editions, and more. Which is why I decided to make this video today so we can go over everything we know about Team Asobi's upcoming title, Astrobot. If we go to the website's FAQ section, they confirm that Astrobot will not be a free-to-play game. Quote, no, unlike Astro's Playroom, Astrobot is a standalone, full-sized adventure that offers over four times more worlds, 300 bots to rescue, and dozens of new powers and features to discover. This past Friday, we got confirmation that Astrobot will retail for $60 American for the Standard Edition and $70 American for the Digital Deluxe Edition. This will be a paid title unlike Astro's Playroom. What is Astro's Playroom? Well, I assume you already know that if you're watching this video, but to the 5% of you that don't, here's a quick rundown. Astro's Playroom is a free packing game that was pre-installed with every PlayStation 5. It was the first Astrobot game I personally played since I never played the Playroom, which was a PS4 packing title, plus I never played the Playroom VR and Astrobot Rescue Mission for the PlayStation VR 1. I assume a majority of people share my experience, mainly due to the fact that Astro's Playroom is a packing game, and that is what really exposed the Astrobot IP to so many people. Astro's Playroom is a showcase for the DualSense controller, and while the game itself was short, consisting of 16 levels, I was honestly quite enamored with it. Not only is it a really well-made 3D platformer that feels great to control, the aesthetic of the universe just really appealed to me. Like, you know those game commercials from the late 2000s? when the whole family's constantly smiling while playing a game? Well, that was legit me when I played Astro's Playroom for the first time. Which makes the PlayStation Blog confirmation of 80 levels across 6 galaxies even more exciting. This will be Team Asobi's biggest game yet, and I'm here for it. Now, let's get to the trailer itself. It starts off with a very cute intro tag as the bots start running towards the PlayStation Studios logo, and here is where we get our first glimpse at some of the cameo bots in this game. Kratos and Atreus from God of War, Aloy from Horizon, Nathan Drake from Uncharted, Ratchet and Clank from their self-titled series, and Spike and a Peepo Monkey from Ape Escape. So if you played Playroom, you're well aware that one of the most charming aspects are all these PlayStation bots scattered throughout the game. There's ones you expect like Sackboy from Little Big Planet, the third party characters like Solid Snake, and obscure choices like Vibribbon. And it looks like these VIP bots, as they are officially called, will be plentiful in this game as we have to rescue over 150 of them, which is way more than what Playroom had. Also, notice how the Peepo Monkey is different from all the other bots? Well, I have a theory about that that I'll get to later. After the intro tag, we see a robot fox wake up Astro in a desert biome. A giant dual sense appears from the sky to pick up Astrobot, and this dual sense is actually called the Dual Speeder, and it's clear that this rocket powered version of the controller will be used throughout the game by Astro. We get a glimpse at a beautiful beach biome in one of these shots, and in the far distance you can make out an island with a giant crab. A giant enemy crab, perhaps? So here's this giant enemy crab. Thanks to the Astrobot website, we get a much better look at this level in all of its glory. But if we zoom in here, you can just make out a bot tied to a tree. We get a much more clear look at this in the trailer, and we see that it's none other than Ratchet. The trailer also makes sure to showcase Astro's new power-ups and abilities, starting off with the Barkster. According to the PlayStation blog, the Bulldog Booster lets you air dash and smash through enemies, metal, and glass. We see footage of this in the trailer as Astro fights a robot that looks like it's from Killer Bean. 
The next power they show off are the Twin Frog Gloves, which allow Astro to perform long-range punches and swings. We see him use these against a giant octopus boss later in the trailer. We get a glimpse of a gorgeous casino level, which is an aesthetic that oddly works very well for me in video games. Here we see another power that Astro can use, which is the ability to freeze time. He can't do it indefinitely though, since we see a gauge getting depleted on his back when the power is active. Another power we see is the giant sponge, which allows Astro to suck up water to destroy obstacles and create platforms. Another power we see, but only very briefly, is this penguin that's strapped to Astro's back. My assumption is that this is what allows Astro to swim underwater, as the penguin power is seen nowhere else in this trailer. But we do have a nice render of it thanks to the game's website. This next moment is where I kind of lost my mind. Is that anything drink? Journey! Eco! Bravo! Oh my god, bro. So yeah, I really need to upgrade my laptop so I can stream properly. I don't intentionally want my camera to run like it's a PlayStation Eye, but oh my god. Seeing Team Asobi commit even more to the PlayStation celebration is so exciting to see. The PlayStation blog implies that these VIP bots will play a bigger role than they did in Playroom, since in that game they were just stationary cameos. We see Nathan Drake ready to take on a platoon of enemies, and what I love about this is the attention to detail. That isn't just some random toy gun that Nathan Drake is holding. It's actually the same gun Nathan Drake uses in the attic scene in Uncharted 4 A Thief's End. We get glimpses of the Traveler from Journey, Eco, and Parappa the Rapper. I love how Eco is holding a watermelon, a very cute reference to the secret ending in the New Game Plus mode of Eco. Later on, we see a PS5 without its covers rising up from the sand, and from what I guess, this looks like the ship Astro uses to traverse across the six galaxies. However, it looks like we have to repair it first, since the website mentions the PS5 mothership has been wrecked by Astro's alien rival, leaving his crew scattered across multiple galaxies. And speaking of an alien rival, I'm gonna go out on a limb and guess that this big green guy is what they're referring to, as he's also featured on the game's box art and is holding the robot from Astro's playroom as hostage in one of his hands. To the people who have played Astrobot Rescue Mission on PSVR 1, I assume this alien rival is the same one as the final boss in that game? Let me know in the comments if I'm right about that. And speaking of bosses, the trailer reveals a bunch of them, including a few that return from Rescue Mission, including the gorilla, bird, and octopus. During the clip of the bird fight, we see another power used by Astro where he turns into a ball, a more defensive power from the looks of it, and we also get two brand new bosses, including a genie and a giant snake named Lady Venomara. Astro is seen with a chicken strapped on his shoulder, indicating that this is another new power, however, we still have no idea what it does. Now, the PlayStation blog mentions that every time you beat a boss, you'll uncover a wonderful secret, but we'll only find out what that is once the game comes out. A VIP bot of Wander also makes an appearance with his classic ancient sword, but he's also joined by Mono and his trusty steed Agro, which is an amazing thing to see as a huge Shadow of the Colossus fan. Parappa also appears in a room where you can just make out a dual sense shooting out some paint to reveal hidden platforms. I assume this is a mechanic that will be used multiple times throughout the game. More astro platforming is shown, and here is where we get another cameo confirmation with Jack from Jack and Daxter. Zooming in, you can see that the bot sports Jack's clothes, green hair, and goggles. Next, we see a scene with the Kratos bot, rocking the look from God of War Ragnarok as he tosses his Leviathan axe to Astro. Heavily implying, to me at least, that Astro will get to use weapons and items from these PlayStation characters. Remember that people monkey I mentioned earlier from the PlayStation Studios intro tag? Well, it wouldn't surprise me if there was a moment in the game where we got to use Spike's time net to catch some apes that escaped, if you catch my drift. Just thinking about the possibilities is making me even more excited. What if we used Wander's ancient sword to help guide us to the next objective? Just like how Wander uses it in Shadow of the Colossus. Team Asobi can get crazy with this, and I hope they do. Right near the end of the trailer, we have this amazing shot of Astro and the rest of his bot crew surfing on a bunch of PlayStation peripherals. 
Now, all of these peripherals were collectibles in Astro's Playroom, and I wouldn't be surprised if we have to collect them again in this game. A few I want to shout out are the Buzz Controller, the SingStar Microphone, and the Spike Bot that's surfing on the PlayStation 1 console. You can also just make out the Nathan Drake Bot on the original PlayStation 3 model. We get one final look at the game with an amazing shot of Astro with his PlayStation brethren. Here we get another look at Spike, but we also see Colch from Loco Roco. Play Loco Roco, by the way. Fantastic game. And the trailer ends off with our release date, September 6th of this year. Yes, the game is only three months away, and I could not be more excited. And that was all the major information I could gather from the trailer, but that's not all. Since then, we've gotten more news about the game, like new details, additions, and VIP bots. Checking out more of the website's FAQ, PlayStation has reiterated that this is a single-player game, meaning no co-op will be included. The game will not include any microtransactions either. In this statement though, they also confirm that the gotcha machine from Astro's Playroom is back, so expect to spend those coins you collected throughout the game to unlock some cool prizes. Also in the screenshots, you can see that the puzzle pieces are returning from Astro's Playroom, which filled out a cool looking mural once you collected all of them. I assume something similar will happen in this new game, only on a much grander scale. And thanks to the website, we got some more VIP bot confirmations. We got Sly Cooper. Cooper, the Yarnum Hunter from Bloodborne, Daxter from Jack and Daxter, Rivet from Ratchet and Clank, and The Boy from The Last Guardian. We also have some more info about the VIP bots. Finding the special VIP bots is only half the story. Use the coins you collect on your travels in the Gotcha Lab to unlock special items for your rescued friends. When a VIP bot is reunited with their unique item, they'll perform special actions from the classic games that inspired them. Pre-order and digital deluxe bonuses were also announced last week, revealing a bunch of new information about the game. If you pre-order either the standard or digital deluxe edition of Astro Bot, you'll receive the following rewards. An early unlock for the Astro Lovestruck Lyricist outfit, which is Parappa the Rapper's outfit. An early unlock for the glorious graffiti dual speeder skin, which I'll get back to in just a bit. And you also get two PSN avatars. The physical edition of the game also comes with this amazing poster featuring the PS5 mothership and all the bots inside it. There are too many references here to go over, but some of my favorites were the bin that has various PlayStation related items like the Wumpa Fruit, the Heavy Rain Paper Crane, the Last Guardian Shield, a Patapon plushie, and so much more. There's a cute Toro plushie, and Lammy's guitar from Oom um Jammer Lammy. The other side of the poster shows a cute comic of what seems to be the beginning of the game. We also get a glimpse of Astro's alien rival at the last panel. And now onto the digital deluxe edition goodies. These include Astro's golden outfit, a Yarnum tourist outfit, which is pretty much the Yarnum hunter from Bloodborne. It looks amazing, by the way. The neon dream and champion's gold dual speeder skins a digital soundtrack, and a digital art book, plus 12 PSN avatars. And thanks to these PSN avatars and the glorious graffiti dual speeder skin, we got even more VIP bots confirmed. From the dual speeder skin, we got Yorda from Eco, Jin Sakai from Ghost of Tsushima, a Hellgas soldier from Killzone, and an Aracom racer from Wipeout. I want to make it clear that it's not the Aracom racer from Wipeout, it's actually the Fizar racer from Wipeout. I don't know why I said Aracom when I originally recorded this, I apologize to the Wipeout community. You may revoke my fandom. It will never happen again. Shout out to the Fizar Racer. And let's keep going on. And from the PSN avatars, we have confirmed Selene from Returnal, a Gran Turismo Racer, and Lady Maria from Bloodborne. Those last three VIP bots I mentioned, plus the Peepo Monkey, all got added to Astro's Playroom last Friday in a surprise update. Yeah, Team Asobi really added in a free update to Astro's Playroom, introducing new gacha prizes to collect and new bots to find and rescue. Now, there is only one bot that you can rescue right now, that being Lady Maria in the GPU jungle. I spent an hour trying to figure out how to save her until I found the clock that was hidden. Then I entered in the release date for the Bloodborne Old Hunters DLC, and voila, Lady Maria was freed. There's also a new mission room in the PlayStation Labo area, counting down the days to release for Astro Bot. A clever way of marketing this game, and a pleasant surprise. The other three bots will apparently be added in later periodically, so you can't save them all just yet, but you know I'm going to be there for all three of them. And I think that's most of the major stuff covered so far. One last thing is that thanks to the PlayStation TikTok channel, we also have another VIP bot confirmed. This time it's Trico from The Last Guardian. There he is. 
in all of its glory. I love it so much. And I think that is most of the major stuff covered. Gary's Guggenheim. Nothing says you made a mistake like a few kilograms of high explosive. Lovely! I recorded all of that a while ago, and it's a good thing I waited on posting this video since we got a ton of new information for Astrobot, including hands on previews, interviews, and new gameplay thanks to the Summer Game Fest event. Let's start off by going over what we learned from the hands on report on the PlayStation blog. Each level will be categorized by by easy, normal, or hard difficulty when hovered over in the overworld map. There's a new item that inflates Astrobot with air, allowing him to reach greater heights. There's video footage of this as well, and yes, it does look very cute. There's more footage of Astro swimming underwater, but with no penguin item like him in the clip from the announcement trailer, this makes me more curious as to what that penguin power actually is. We briefly see Astro flying to a new level called Construction Derby, the name being a cute reference to Destruction Derby, a PS1 vehicular combat game made by Cygnosis. Astro collects a puzzle piece in this video as well, further confirmation that those will be returning from Astro's playroom. The levels that are marked as hard sound like they are shorter than the main levels but with significantly more challenge, obviously. Unfortunately, we didn't get to see any kind of footage for these levels but we did learn that one of them, Slow Down Showdown, Astro will use an hourglass item to slow enemies, platforms, and environmental hazards that move incredibly fast. A clip of Astro saving the Ratchet VIP bot shows some UI elements for the game, including how many bots will appear per level. An icon with the PlayStation symbols on the top right corner indicates that it's a VIP bot. And there's also this cute animation of Ratchet going inside the dual speeder after he's been saved and collected. The Kratos and Atreus VIP bots make an appearance, and what's interesting about this is that according to IGN, these two bots flew away to another ice-covered world, implying that there will be levels based on PlayStation titles. Nicholas Duche, the studio director at Team Asobi, said, quote, The hammer and the two Odin's ravens kinda give it away, but what happens inside that world is to be determined. Please play it when it comes out. And also thanks to IGN, we got confirmation that Astrobot will be getting free DLC post-launch. Nicholas Duche tells IGN that it'll be focused on adding more challenge levels to the game, but that won't be the only component. It seems that these challenge levels are where you'll get to rescue even more PlayStation-inspired VIP bots, and IGN theorizes that these DLC challenges could add even more bots to the game, which would be fantastic to see. And speaking of VIP bots, we got even more confirmations, including Cat from Gravity Rush, Lammy from Oom Jammer Lammy, which is great to see, those are two great picks. Thanks to a VGC interview with Nicolas Duchet, we know that artifacts are not returning as collectibles, as the focus this time seems to be way more on the characters themselves. Quote, it's just characters. We've already done the hardware thing. We did consider it, but decided not to. End quote. And while this may be disappointing to some, at least we did have the shot of all the PlayStation peripherals in the announcement trailer, meaning that they will be seen in Astrobot, just not as collectibles. Another item is seen as well, a magnet that Astro can use to pick up metal scraps to create a giant projectile to uncover more parts of the level. And last but not least, we see a clip of Astro finishing a level while all the bots he saved are celebrating, including Ratchet and Rivet. And that's pretty much all the main stuff I could gather from these new previews. If you want more detailed thoughts by those who actually played the game, I highly recommend checking out their preview coverage. It's great, these guys did a great job. And one thing is clear, the excitement for Astrobot is almost universally held. It's a great thing to see the community rally behind this upcoming 3D platformer, and I hope this sends a message to PlayStation that we want more of these types of games. And I also hope that people put their money where their mouth is and actually buy Astrobot at launch. I know I already did. That's it for me everybody, thank you so much for watching, if you made it to the end, give the video a like or dislike depending on how you felt about it, and comment, let me know what your excitement level is for Astrobot, and consider subscribing as well, it helps out the channel. I know it's been a while since I uploaded on YouTube, but I'm looking to change that now because we got more news to talk about all around. I also did buy a PSVR 1 recently, just so I can play Astrobot Rescue Mission. I am definitely going to do a review and platinum video for that game on my channel in the near future. But anyways, that's it from me. I'm Real Radic, and I'm signing out.